Shenzhen city is famous for two things, cutting edge technology and sweltering heat. It's a city where summer temperatures are 31 to 35 degrees Celsius on a normal day. So trying to find snow here sounds ridiculous, right? But China didn't just find it, they built it. Welcome to Huafa Snow World. This is a 100,000 square meter beast that stays frozen at minus 6 degrees right in the middle of a subtropical heat wave. It is the world's largest indoor ski resort and it's fighting a 24-7 war against physics just to keep the whole thing from melting into a catastrophic puddle. And the price tag for this frozen miracle? A staggering 4 billion US dollars. But how do you manufacture winter on this scale in a city like this? And more importantly, why would anyone drop 4 billion dollars just to do it? To answer this, we have to look at the bigger picture. Ever since it became a special economic zone in 1980, this city has been the undisputed factory of the world. Almost everything electronic passes through here at some point. If you're holding a smartphone right now, there's a good chance its journey started in Shenzhen. But being great at manufacturing is no longer enough. By 2019, the government realized the city needed to evolve. And that's when their goal shifted from just making things to becoming a global center for culture, lifestyle, and high-end services. Huafa Snow World is a key part of that plan. The resort sits in the new Qianhai Bay District, often called the Manhattan of Shenzhen. This area is being developed as a financial hub meant to compete with Hong Kong. But a world-class district can't survive on offices and banks alone. It needs something that attracts people. That's where a ski resort comes in, which is also bringing a massive cultural shift. Skiing used to be a niche hobby in China, but the Olympics changed that. Over 346 million Chinese people have engaged in winter sports since 2015, and a major role in this interest is played by the 2022 Winter Olympics. But that growth created a problem. Most of China's wealth and population is in the south, while almost all the natural snow is far away in the north. For the 150 million people living in the Guangdong province, seeing real snow usually meant a four to five hour flight to Harbin or a trip to Japan. Huafa Snow World solves that geography problem. By bringing the mountain into the city, the resort expects over one million visitors every year. And for many people who've lived their entire lives in a subtropical climate, this won't just be entertainment. It will be their very first time experiencing winter. Now, let's talk about the location. We're in Qianhai Bay, right next to the city's massive exhibition center. And honestly, for ice engineers, this is one of the worst places you could choose. Shenzhen has a subtropical climate, which means that it's not just hot, it's sticky. In the summer, the air is thick and wet, with humidity often hitting 84% in the summer season. That kind of moist heat acts like a steam bath which melts ice instantly. And yet, right here, they're building a ski facility four times larger than the famous Ski Dubai. So how big is this snow world really? Well, the key number here is the vertical drop. That's the distance from the very top of the slope to the bottom. Here, it's 83 meters. If that number doesn't sound scary, imagine standing on the roof of a 25-story building, putting skis on and sliding straight down. That's the height of this indoor mountain. The main track is 441 meters long, nearly half a kilometer. It's long enough that even professional skiers will feel their legs burning by the time they reach the bottom. And it's not just one slope. There are five different tracks. Wide, gentle slopes for beginners touching the snow for the first time. And right next to them, steep professional tracks designed for international competitions. To make things even harder, snow wasn't the only thing inside this building. They also built a hotel, a deep diving pool, and a warm wave pool in the same complex. Think about how crazy that contrast is. On one side of the wall, people are wearing thick winter jackets shivering in minus six degree cold. Just a few meters away, families are swimming in warm water in their bathing suits. So here's the big question. 
Why doesn't this giant block of ice melt into the swimming pool? Because engineers had to treat the entire building like a huge, high-tech cooler. Step 1 is the shell. You can't use normal concrete walls here. The walls here are extremely thick and packed with heavy insulation layers. Think of it like a giant thermos, keeping the cold in and the Shenzhen heat out. Step 2 is the zoning. The ski area stays at minus 6 degrees Celsius. But remember that hotel and water park next door? They're kept at 28 degrees. To stop these climates from mixing, they use airlock transition zones, similar to what spacecraft use. You never open straight into the cold area. You pass through a buffer that traps heat before it can reach the snow. Step 3 is the snow itself. The snow is made with modern snowmaking machines that keep the slopes covered in snow. The indoor hall stays at around minus 6 degrees Celsius so the snow doesn't melt. And finally, the engine. Deep inside the building is a massive refrigeration plant. Industrial compressors push refrigerant through kilometers of pipes beneath the floors, keeping the ground frozen solid. But that leads to another question. How do you build a freezer this big without it collapsing? The owners didn't want another boring square building. So they called architects from 10 Design and gave them full freedom. What came out didn't look like a building at all. If you'd see this from a distance, it would feel like a giant blue whale rising out of the water, frozen mid-jump, matching the fast high-energy vibe of Shenzhen. To give it that icy feel, the exterior was wrapped in special ceramic boards and aluminium panels. When light hits it, the surface looks more like a glacier than a wall. Construction of this urban glacier began in 2022. By mid-2025, the main skeleton of the structure was standing. After that, almost the entire summer was spent installing heavy snowmaking and cooling machinery inside. But this is where they get the biggest headache. Logistics. Normal walls couldn't be used. To keep extreme cold inside, these walls were thick and insulated. At the same time, a luxury JW Marriott Hotel was being built right next door, and the resort had to connect to Metro Line 20 with a walking bridge. Sounds manageable, except the metro station itself was still under construction. But somehow, they pulled it off. Last year, on September 29, 2025, Huafa Snow World officially opened its doors and took the crown as the world's largest indoor ski resort. But opening day wasn't the finish line. When you fight nature on this scale, it always fights back. Even after construction, three major problems threatened the entire project. Problem one was energy. Running a giant freezer 24-7 in the middle of the tropics is incredibly expensive. Plus, burning that much power is terrible for the environment. To fix this, they covered the top of the building with a massive grid of solar panels. These panels generate electricity that reduces the power bill substantially, though 24-7 operation still requires supplementary grid energy. The number two problem is the temperature clash. Remember that warm pool we talked about earlier? It sits right next to the snow. If the insulation fails even a tiny bit, you get thermal bridging. Heat leaks into the snow zone cold leaks into the pool. If that happens, your fresh snow turns into brown slush and your swimmers next door start freezing in the pool. To stop this, they had to engineer airtight barriers that seal the two worlds completely apart. And finally, the biggest problem of all was money. The total cost of this project over 4 billion US dollars. To make that money back, you don't just need a few tourists. You need over a million people to buy tickets every single year. They're making a huge bet. They believe that Chinese families are willing to pay extra to ski indoors right now, rather than waiting to travel to real mountains in Japan or Europe. So now that it's open, what does this change? For the 13.5 million people living in Shenzhen, it's a huge shift. Before, skiing meant booking flights and planning long trips. Now, it's just a subway ride away. It also creates something that never existed before in southern China, a year-round training ground for winter sports. 
Economically, it completely transforms the Qianhai Bay area. What used to be an industrial waterfront is a luxury destination now. It also creates hundreds of permanent jobs from ski instructors to refrigeration engineers. But globally, it sets a new standard. It proves that with enough engineering and money, climate is optional. We're already seeing similar projects being planned in other tropical Asian cities. It changes our perception of what is physically possible in architecture. Looking forward, Huafa Snow World plans to host international ski competitions. It's not just for beginners, they want this to be a serious sports venue. But it also has a contradiction. The building collects rainwater and has wetland areas to stay green, yet it still burns massive amounts of energy just to stay frozen. But in the end, this project sums up China's approach to infrastructure. If the land doesn't give you what you need, whether it's a bridge, a dam or a winter season, you can engineer it from scratch, although it can still give you a tough time. They spent $4 billion to prove that winter can happen anywhere, as long as you can pay the electric bill. So what do you think? Would you pay to ski indoors in the tropics? Or is the real mountain experience impossible to replace? Let us know in the comments. Share this video with your friends and subscribe for more Mega Build engineering stories. Thanks for watching.